Hi guys, it's Business here. Welcome to the Sweet Sun Sunday. Does it sound like we're going to be eating caramelized bananas and listening to the marshmallows melting in hot chocolate? Well, probably not. But anyway, we'll be discovering some cool sounds and I'm going to show you how to do them just in a moment in Ableton. So without further ado, let's jump into the Ableton and let's get designing. Okay, guys. And today we're going to be designing a lead synth that can be used in synth pop or any other electronic music. And that sounds like this. <laughs> Isn't that true? Okay. Let's get our hands dirty with designing. Let's go. We're going to be needing the SQ8TV. Let's drop it into the first media channel. Okay, now that's how it looks like. It's actually quite cool. But uh, we're not going to be touching this screen as it has some presets already made. But let's go straight here and find a template, default template. That's a clean template. And yeah, sounds ugly, obviously. Well, that's just the default template. Let's go to synthesis straight away because we won't be able to do much in the hardware section. That just looks nice, but not very useful. Uh, now, that's all the back office that we're going to be using today. And first things first, we're going to need a transwave saw. So that's a basically very similar, only has a little bit more parameters. Like, like we can change that, for example. Okay. So that's the first. We're going to be using a second one as well straight away. We're just going to go to transwaves as well and try to pick a square one this time. So we're going to be using two oscillator shapes. That's what it goes like. Okay, let's set it up just like that. Let's be random for the moment. First, we're going to be needing an amp that's going to hit hard. We're going to have a little bit of release. Maybe not that hard. Oh. Probably just two. Yeah, that's okay. That's good for a lead sound. What else? What else? What else? What else? We can add an oscillator tree, but that's going to be used probably later. But we're going to use a noise this time. So we're going to introduce a little bit of noise, maybe some nicer one. Okay. This is fine. Let's drop it down a little bit. And let's go up an octave on the second oscillator. And then let's fine tune it a little bit down. Yeah, so we have that phasing kind of sound. Okay, that's nice. What we want to do is press mono because we're going to be doing a lead sound. So we don't need many sounds at the same time. Let's put a little bit of glide on it, but not too much. That should be fine. Okay, now important filter. Let's go down with the frequency. Let's up resonance a little bit. And let's automate that a little bit. Let's go to the envelope one and let's choose different one. Let's say uh, driver A, the SR will be fine. Let's do a little bit of attack. Okay. And as we can see, it doesn't do much at the moment because we need to assign it to the frequency one of a filter. So that was envelope one. Okay, there we go. And then we have to add the amount of the envelope one affecting the frequency. Okay, that's fine. Now we can go down a bit. Okay, that's fine. Okay, now the sound got a little bit quiet, so we can up that a little bit here. Okay, that's fine. Uh, we can turn the unison on, but uh, less detune, you know that I don't like too much detune on unison. Okay, let's bring that up again a little bit, so you can hear what's going on here. Because we go really low on the volumes, minus 16. Okay, let's bring that up actually. Now better, now better. 
Okay, uh, so what else can we modify? We can modify the resonation, resonance, sorry, we can modify the resonance with a uh, LFO, let's say. Let's do a nice slow sine wave. No, that's not a sine wave. Let's do a slow and low sine wave. Yeah, but very delicate like that. And assign it to first resonance. Let's up that a little bit. So you have this pumping a little bit. So we can modify that as well too. So let's go LFO one. And we can modify that too. And let's go LFO one. And but let's go on the minus side. So they be like interchanging between each other like that. And now we have the sound floating and flying. That's actually quite nice. Now we can always reset the envelope. Actually, each time you press the new key, that's fine. But let's do some modification, some more, so we can be, uh, we can have like a, more things going on here. Let's add a envelope to, let's get the like kind of aggressive one. Let's see how that sounds on this parameter. Uh, sorry, it was in the envelope too. Yeah. We won't be adding anything. We won't be adding anything to the uh, frequency because we're going to add a mode wheel after that. So we can change and open the frequency for us a little bit. We can modify a volume of the noise. We can also do that with the envelope. Let's try like an ADSR envelope. And let's, uh, we can add it like in a minus. Let's see how that will sound. And let's add it to the level of a noise. That's envelope number three. And let's add a little bit of it. Okay, but when we want to go like that, like so, that's perfect. Okay. That sounds solid, not too bad. I okay, need three voices of unison. Okay, that sounds uh, like kind of aggressive. Let's go up a little bit in the volume. We're only hitting minus 10, so that's not too loud. That's fine. Okay, now let's do a little bit modification to what the mod wheel does. And first of all, we can add it to the frequency. So let's plus here, mod wheel, it's here. So whenever we touch the mod wheel, it's gonna change the frequency. <laughs> Now he also does something else, as we can see. It adds a little wobble. We can leave it, and I know this, this SKTV has it on the LFO tree. Look, that's really fast. But we can slow it down. We can change it to a sine wave. Uh, we can amp that a little bit so it's flying like that. And we can actually, let me go down with it. So it's not going to go too crazy like that. You see it changed the sine wave here. And that's affecting the tune. So that's going to detune the whole oscillator. We can add that a little bit. So it's so it's giving like a slightly vibey floating and wobbling thing, but like very slow. I guess that's the section of a synthesis done. Let's go to the effects and see what we can do there. So we have some presets already. Delay. Delay would be nice. Let's add a little delay and see how it sounds. But let's sync it to the eight notes or quarters. Eight notes. Pink punk. It already sounds much bigger and wider, yeah? Let's add the width, that should be fine. Don't need to change much in it. We can, of course, add a mod wheel to that so we can bring a little bit more of the delay after now. The second thing I chose to be Juno Chorus. Let's add a little bit of that. Not too bad. Okay, effect tree. Let's uh, overdrive it a little bit. Let's put a little bit of drive. You see, that's where it gets louder. So we can go softer here. 
Now let's also add a little bit of a mod wheel to that. Let's get our modifications crazy. Yeah, that's sweet. Level's fine. We can go down a little bit. That's fine. And then at the end, we add a little bit of reverb. Of course, we can do that outside of our synth, but uh, since the SQATV and Arturia synths have a really good effect, we can add the one here and see how it goes. Where is it? Reverb here. Yeah, that's, uh, that's fun. Okay, let's add another mod wheel modification here. So let's get a little bit crazy on the sound. I like it. Guess that's that's a nice sound done already. Not much we can do. We can of course change play with the frequency a little bit. That sounds fine for me so far. Uh, okay, that's the sound done. Okay, let's play the long some beats I've prepared before. Space, yeah. stop it okay so okay okay guys so have you seen it wasn't really that bad it was actually quite easy and of course you can probably get the same results in any other analog or very similar results in any other analog synthesizer uh doesn't necessarily have to be the sqatv but that's a good choice actually so uh, of course that's it for me for today don't forget to check my instagram check my t-shirt shop bitworkshop.com and also, there's a link to the gear that I use in the description down below. You can follow these and buy whatever you wish. Just don't spend too much. Okay, that's it from me for today. Thanks so much for watching and see you guys in the next video. Cheers.